Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome back. Um, our next item, um, item four is 9D at Bannum. Um, our speakers on that is um, Martin Goimer, the applicant, and Ben Woodings, who's the agent. If you'd like to come sit on the right-hand side, please, gentlemen. So that's application 3PL 2021-0153, and that's a full application. Um, once these gentlemen are sat down. Thank you. Make yourselves comfy. It's over to you then, please, Naomi. Thank you, Chairman. So this application seeks full planning permission for alterations to the existing convenience store, including demolition and rebuild of the derelict barn to enlarge the existing convenience store and provision of a new cafe area. In addition, alterations are proposed to buildings and lean-to structures attached to them. The application site is located at the Apple Yard, Kenninghall Road in Bannham. It is outside the defined settlement boundary for Bannham at the junction of Grove Road and Kenninghall Road. There you can see the location plan of it. The application site is located within Flood Zone 1 and is identified on the government's flood risk maps as being at very low risk from surface water and river flooding. So this is the site and the wider context. Um, you can see the uh, site location and to the south of, to the bottom of the screen there, you've got the Bannam Zoo and the car park to Bannam Zoo. This is the uh, existing elevations of the building. And again, and the proposed elevations. And more proposed elevations. This is the existing floor plan, showing the retail store to the left with and stores and access to the rear and the barn structure at the front there. And then the proposed floor plan, which shows the, um, the new structure would have uh, house an extended shop area and a ca uh, cafe <clears throat> area as well. And these are the site photos, the retail unit, existing retail unit to the left there and the building to be demolished. And this is the building from the rear and you can see the existing buildings that join onto it, uh, which were they are small businesses. <clears throat> so in terms, back to the location plan, in terms of uh, consultation responses, uh, the parish council believed that the effort should be made to renovate the building and not to demolish it. Uh, the ecology consultant raised no objection to the proposal subject to conditions. Norfolk County Council Highways raised no objection subject to conditions. No objection has been raised from the contaminated land officer nor from environmental health officers subject to conditions. Uh, there is an objection from the historic buildings consultant who concluded that the uh, repair and adaptive reuse of the existing building is technically possible, and they considered it to be of local interest. In addition, we have received comments from the Historic Environment Service um, after completion of the officer report, and therefore um, they've been included as, as part of the supplementary. They advise that the proposed development affects a heritage asset comprising a probable 17th century timber framed threshing barn shown on historic mapping, the circa 1840 Bannum Tithy map. The proposed works will alter and affect the significance of the heritage asset, which is worthy of recording 
However, they have raised no objections subject to the inclusion of conditions with any forthcoming planning permission. Um, in terms of local representations, we've received one letter of representation which provided a historical look at the potential past use of the barn and highlighting the rarity of the build, particularly in relation to the construction of the main barn doors. The main points of concern are the loss of the non-designated heritage asset. In terms of the principle of the development, the application has been assessed in line with policy COM4 of the Breckland Local Plan. And it is considered to um, be compliant with this policy as it would result in the enhancement and expansion of an existing community facility. In terms of the uh, design and impact on the character and appearance of the area, the application has been assessed in accordance with policy Gen 2 and COM 1 and policy EMV08 of the Breckland Local Plan. Policy EMV08 is concerned with non-designated heritage assets and states that development should be expected to conserve or wherever possible, enhance the historic character and appearance and setting of non-designated historic assets. In respect of non-designated heritage assets, the local plan states that these assets play an essential role in reinforcing a sense of local character and distinctiveness in the locality. Regards should be had to all heritage assets, designated and non-designated, when assessing applications for development. The proposal involves internal and external alterations to the existing convenience store, including a revised layout, new roof in revised window door fenestration in places and the demolition and rebuild of the derelict historic barn to enlarge the convenience store and create a new cafe area. Whilst it is acknowledged that the historic barn proposed for demolition is not a listed building and not in a designated conservation area, it is a recognisable local landmark and is considered to be a non-designated heritage asset, playing a key role in reinforcing a sense of local rural character and distinctiveness in this part of the village. The local planning authority therefore sought the views of the historic buildings officer, who initially requested the submission of a structural engineer's report from somebody with specific expertise to justify the structural condition of the building. The applicant submitted a structural inspection report for further consideration and upon a reconsultation with the historic buildings officer, <laughs> um, he advised that the repair and adaptive reuse of the existing building is technically possible, whilst the internal and external alterations of that to the existing convenience store um, are considered acceptable in planning terms. The loss of the historic barn is not considered to be acceptable on character and appearance and heritage grounds. Um, in addition, a viability assessment has also been submitted for consideration and assessed by an independent assessor specializing in commercial viability. In conclusion, the independent assessor's report found that the remodeling shows little difference in the appraisal outcome between the option of retaining the building and alternatively demolishing it. With this in mind, the local planning authority remain concerned with the proposed loss of the existing historic building. Concerns were relayed to the agent who submitted further comments for consideration. In response to the applicant's comments that the modeling clearly demonstrates that the refurbishment option generates a loss, the independent assessor advised that this is not the case in their appraisal. It shows a slight profit and broadly similar outcome to the scenario where the barn is demolished. The independent assessor did not agree that the applicant's financial appraisal is correct. The applicant advised that, that, a, refurb that a refurbishment barn project adjoining other structures with significant repair work and critically requiring the store to remain operational throughout is in all likelihood going to exceed the budget, probably by a significant margin. However, the independent assessor advised that probably and in all likelihood is not a sufficient justification here to support the applicant's argument. In conclusion, the assessor disagreed with the findings of the applicant's viability assessment. 
the historic buildings officer was also consulted and advised that having considered the additional comments of the applicant, their previous concerns remain applicable from a heritage perspective. Whilst the internal and external alterations to the existing convenience store are considered acceptable in planning terms, the loss of the historic barn is not considered to be acceptable on character appearance and heritage grounds, as already said having due regard to policies COM1, Gen2 and EO, EMV08 of the BLP. In terms of amenity impact, given the nature of the development proposed and its location away from existing residential development, it is considered that it will not give rise to any detrimental amenity impacts having regard to overlooking loss of privacy, overbearing, overshadowing and loss of light considerations. Furthermore, whilst it is not clear what hours of operation are proposed, particularly in respect of the cafe, it is accepted that this could be conditioned with any forthcoming planning permission to ensure that the proposal does not lead to an adverse amenity impact in respect of noise considerations. And on this basis, the application is considered to have due regard to um, policy COM3. Uh, highway safety, as already mentioned, the local highway authority have raised no objection to this application subject to conditions. And in terms of ecology, um, there are no objections from the council's ecologists subject to conditions. Nutrient neutrality has also been satisfactorily addressed. And as already mentioned, no objection from um, a contaminated land officer or having regard to flood risk con considerations. However, in light of the assessment and given the historic buildings officer's objection, the, applicant, the application is recommended for refusal on the basis that it would result in the loss of a non-designated heritage asset, which is considered to be a recognisable local landmark playing a key role in reinforcing a sense of local rural character and distinctiveness in this part of the village. In the opinion of the local planning authority, the submitted viability assessment does not demonstrate that the conversion of the non-designated heritage asset would result in an unviable development. Therefore, the unjustified loss of, the non, of this non-designated historic asset in a prominent location would fail to conserve or enhance the historic character and appearance and setting of the area, contrary to policies EMV 08, COM 1 and Gen 2 of the Breckland Local Plan. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, we have uh, Martin Goimer first, please, who's the applicant. Oh. Swap over. Okay, that's fine. So we've got Ben Woodings, who's the agent. You've got uh, one and a half minutes, sir, if, unless you want to alter your times. Yeah, that's fine. Far away, sir. Make sure you're, um, uh, I was going to say your alarm, your speaker's on. You just need to press the button. Uh, I'm just going to quickly outline three main points. First, the community benefit. The expansion of the one stop secures a great community benefit for the long term, and importantly, it will reduce the tendency to drive to Attleborough. The benefits to Bannum of a properly sized store, in times as they are, and for sustainability reasons, cannot be overstated. For heritage, as a visual asset, we stress that this will not be a loss to the visual amenity to Bannum. We accept that heritage assets are important to local character, which is why the proposals mimic the existing look as they do. Alternative scenarios are put forward by the council under either option, and under either option, refurbishment or per our proposals, the visuals will be the same. The externals are unsalvageable. It will appear practically the same under any option, and we therefore disagree with the council's policy assessment. In terms of viability, it's been noted there's a minor difference in the figures, but neither study shows a rosy investment by any margin. Uh, Arnold Key's analysis shows a definite positive outcome, small, but one which fortunately Mr. Gormer is willing to accept and invest with at some risk. The council used an assessor based in Leeds and they acknowledge their shortcomings in finding meaningful comparisons to judge their figures. Should this application be successful, Mr. Gormer will be proceeding on the basis of Arnold Key's judgment based on their local knowledge and their long experience. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Goimer, please. The barn is not a listed building. We are looking new for old, like for like. I've known the building since the early 1950s when it was a cattle shed and then became a farm produce shop. 
uh, selling Bannum cider made on the farm. Um, developed, uh, sorry, the environmental health finally closed it down and we built the new shop adjoining. Um, has served as a craft barn, but for the last 20 years or so, the barn has been derelict and continued a steady decline. Like a faithful old dog, there comes a time when a difficult decision must be made, and so it is with this old barn. It served well, but it's past retrieval for future useful pur purposes. There is a need for a practical building that is capable of being kept clinically clean, well insulated, low maintenance, low energy for the display and sale of food. And I have a keen existing lessee wishing to expand their business, serving the local and growing community. I have the opportunity of fulfilling that criteria by building a new and recreating the outward appearance of the existing structure. There is little of significance remaining of the original structure. Roof timbers were supplemented with new in the 1970s when it had a new tin roof. Ground beam has rotted away, etc. The restoration of a derelict barn will incur a great deal more in time, resource, energy and finance and then produce something which is not truly satisfied the current and future needs. The refurbished barn, if refurbished, would not reveal anything of historic um, value inside. There would be new walls, new ceilings, commiserate with a food shop, and the exterior walls would be rebuilt, and the tin roof would also be new. So there's nothing retained historically to be seen apart from the profile which we are intending to reduplicate. Um, so the old barn is quite unsound and past redemption, and it would be a lower cost to replace it with new and land up with a building which is useful for the food shop outlet. And I have not submitted this application to replace the old barn lightly, but it is time for that difficult decision. Thank you. Thank you. I did add your your lack of time onto the other one. That's why I went on a bit further. Thank you very much. It's open to questions from members. Uh, Councillor Mark Kittle-Morris. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I think the refurbishment of this building depends on the brick noggins and not nogging the nog or whatever, whatever. but um, whether those can be replaced by anything which is going to preserve the timber frame, because obviously the sole plate's going to have to be replaced, which is going to be underpinning and all sorts of things like that. Um, I'm just wondering whether, if, if it was refurbished, how much longer the structure would remain in place and, and have its historical context retained. So it's a question of, 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 of whether we can actually allow this to be retained. Can I, Sorry. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, officers will correct me, but the application is to demolish. I know. I'm, oh, sorry. I'm, so, I'm, I'm coming to that, Chairman. Oh, good. I mean, Thank I'm talking you. about. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about the, 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 how you re refurbish it and what it will look like. Refurbish it and what it will look like and what it and how much longer it will last. Yes, but in, in, look, if it, if it was demolished, I can stop what the you. building. But what that is is that's a, that's not what we're here to decide. That's a separate thing in 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 the airy fairy land of of loveliness. <laughs> that possibly could be sorted out. But the application that we have in front of us is, is um, a recommendation from officers of refusal to the demolition of the barn following a consultation with our historic buildings <laughs> officer. And I agree that there's, there's information, part information there that this could be done and that could be done, but a cumulative, um, it would be very what, expensive what, what to I'm do. What I'm trying to say, Chairman, is that the, I think <laughs> the demolition of the building would be an advantage to the project that's being put, put before us. Yes, but you're asking these gentlemen here to spend a lot of money, and that's not what we're here for. Do uh, Councillor Atwell, did you have your hand up? Thank you. Could you just bring up the um, elevation, <coughs> proposed elevation plans, please? I can't read it from here, but um, what what what's the proposed roof going to be on this historic barn? One assumes that that wasn't tin when that was originally built. 
Who's that question to? That was originally Thatch, I would have thought. It was Thatch. But many, many centuries. And what's, well, what, what's, century what is the roof sheeting? But it, be sheeting or? it was tin when we took the farm yeah. on in the 1950s and it was replaced in the 1950s. And, the, and this proposal is for sheeting? For, for the sensitive sheeting. Material. Profile sheeting. Councillor Atterwall. Chairman, um, are we talking about talk, king span sheeting? I mean, sensitive tin sheeting is not what this historic building would originally had on its roof. Gentleman's quite right, it would have been thatched. So we've got something that was uh, sheeted with corrugated tin in the 1950s, then that was replaced sometime in the, 70, in the 70s probably. Um, that is not in keeping with what the original building was anyway. And now we're talking about trying to preserve with all these lovely brick panels and the historic building officer got to spend all this money um, and we're still going to end up with something where we're going to end up with a tin roof, which isn't historical. I also just want to make a point. Could you just clarify me? I think I'm right in saying this sits opposite the, the modern Bannam Zoo site. So in terms of location, um, I would say, you know, it, it's, it's not the prettiest. And just to emphasise, once again, this isn't listed, is it? It's never been listed, not listed. I think I'm I think I'm having problems to tell you that it's a demolition and a rebuild and and to form a pastiche of what's existing at the moment. So the roof profiling would be acceptable in most terms. But I'm gonna let Rebecca tell you in her in her lovely words, unless I've just said the whole thing. Uh, you, yeah, you have. What what you need to what you need to consider, members, is your starting point is the development plan, and your starting point is policy EMV08, which is for non-designated heritage assets. Therefore, it is irrelevant whether the building is listed or not. You have a specific policy in your development plan which is specifically designed to protect non-designated heritage assets. That isn't a policy that's combined within the listed building policy. That's a separate standalone policy. And that policy in itself is very clear about where your position should start from. So your position of your starting point with any non-designated heritage asset and your historic building officer, who's your statutory consultee, is telling you it's a non-designated heritage asset. The historic environments service is telling you it's a specifically uh, important heritage building. But your starting point is EMV08, which says you should be expected to conserve or wherever possible enhance the historic character, appearance and setting of a non-designated heritage asset. Proposals that could affect um, heritage assets um, should go appropriate should go through appropriate assessment proportionate to the significance of the asset so your starting point is to conserve that building that is your starting point in accordance with emv08 now we've heard from the applicants that they're um that they wish to demolish the building and the reasons behind that and they feel that they could offer a better community provision the community service is a policy como for in the local plan which you can balance and, and weigh up in your deliberations but as you've heard from the case officer we've asked them for appropriate assessment in the form of a structural survey the structural survey has shown that the building is structurally sound and that your historic environment officer has made comments about how any repairs can be made and then an assessment has been made through viability to say proportionately would that be more expensive or less expensive keeping the building than demolishing the building and rebuilding it and what your viability um what our viability appraisal um, officer has told us is it's, it's the same cost to do to repair it and use it for a, a, a future community use as is to demolish it and rebuild it so those are the facts that are in front of you members you can obviously consider the future use of the building and the asset but your starting point should be to conserve that building in accordance with emv08 Councillor right what could I just talk specifically about the roof? Okay. So first thing I'd like to ask the applicant is, what colour is this new tin roof going to be? So that's the first thing, and then I'd like to follow up, please. I think the original roof in the 50s was red. Then it's, it's been 
uh, from the 70s or 80s green. Um, I don't know what you're designating. Um, well, I would just add that it's something that would be conditioned as part of the materials choice anyway, but we are effectively replicating the asset. Thank you. Um, Councillor Antoine. Okay, so could you just bring up the photograph of the existing building, please? So to me, the, the, the standout part of that building is the roof. The roof is the, the largest part of the facade that you see. So even if you rebuild it from scratch, the roof is still going to be the predominant feature with, and that's still going to have some kind of metal clad roof, sheet roof. Um, which is what's on there at the moment, whether that's red, green, rust, I don't know. So I, in terms of the appearance of it, the bit that you're trying, the heritage officers are saying they're trying to conserve is not the, the, the standout feature of that building. The standout feature is the roof. And whatever you do with it, whether, you, whether it's brand new, whether you, or you're trying to do something with that, it's going to be the roof. So I don't personally, see the benefit in retaining the existing structure, much of which is rotten and isn't the original structure as this gentleman's told us. Um, so why not have something that's modern and fit for purpose and can help expand the business for the benefit of people in Bannham? I think that's what we've got way up here. But for me, the roof is the key, the key issue. Any other Any other questions from members at all? Councillor Bowes, Councillor Plummer, Councillor Wilkinson. Well, I'd just comment that the roof is not a reason to get rid of the building. And, um, you know, we should be trying to protect our um, heritage and assets such as, such as that if we can. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Plummer. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, not for me to advise the applicant, but I should think the best way is to apply to have that converted into a house take the money from that and then build yourself a nice shop the other side of the road. Oh, that's just my, my point of view. Yeah, I think Bantam Zoo would have something to say about it. Well, that. I uh, mean, Councillor Wilkinson, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I haven't got a question, it's a statement really. Um, we are struggling as members, I think, to, to see this particular barn as a non-designated heritage asset in its original form which is clearly not in its original form as a non-heritage asset. Well, that's easy said. I've got one in my, in my yard, which is at the base of a windmill, which is a non-designated heritage asset, which means I can't get any money to do it up. I, have, I had to spend money to do it up. I would love to have knocked it down, but instead of that, I have to use it as a roundabout when I drive in and out with my car. But that's the, that's the fault of having something like that. So um, I'm going to let Rebecca say a few words and, and chastise you all. Can I just help members, I think, in, and tell you a bit about Section 16 of the MPPF? So Section 16 of the MPPF is about heritage assets. And your starting point with any heritage asset is to identify what is the significance of that building. So it's not what the prominent feature is of the building. It is what, what is the significance of this building? What makes it a heritage asset in the first place? So, you know, we know that it's <coughs> 17th century. We know that it's timber frame. We know that it's a threshing barn. It would have been very characteristic of that, that part of Bannum at the time. So, so significance can lie in how a building looks, who was born there, you know, what the building was used for, you know, what relevance it had in history. So there's many different elements of significance but you've heard today that um, from our historic buildings officer via Naomi obviously and from the historic environment service that the significance of this building is what it was previously used on the date that it was used for and that timber frame which is characterized by these noggins and all all the, the character that form the significance of the building and your historic buildings officer has told you that that's the significance of the building so that's what you're aiming to protect and then section 16 of the MPPF says, um, 
goes on to say that you should conserve all historic buildings, including non-designated heritage assets. It doesn't separate the two out from being listed. It, it does include non-designated heritage assets in your assessment. Mm. However, if you are to accept the loss of this building through the determination of this application, you have to then decide whether it's substantial or non-substantial harm. I would suggest to you members that demolition usually in most instances is substantial harm, but that's usually with listed buildings. So this will be non-substantial harm. And then you can weight that harm against public benefit. And that is section 16 of the MPPF. So you have to determine what the significance is of the building is and wherein that lies. Obviously, you would lose all the significance of this building because you're losing the whole building. And I agree with Nigel that by replacing it with a pastiche building, you can't get that significance back. You can't get that timber frame back, regardless of how you remodel it or the history of it or, you know, exactly what makes up that significance. But in the event that members do consider there is public benefit in the loss of this building in, for, in terms of the community of Bannham or what it provides, then you must balance the loss of that historic asset against the community benefit and you can do that through the process what i will remind you of that our starting point is to conserve historic buildings and your historic building officer has told you that with repairs to that building modest repairs to that building then the building would we conserve for future generations thank you okay the only thing i have with that is the terminology modest repairs because i think i think that's a little bit Conjective. I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. Significant rather than modest. Um, Councillor Dygan, please. Um, I think earlier, sort of, um, Rebecca suggested that um, the historic buildings officer's recommendations would have to be done on the same basis as we might have highways recommendation or an environmental recommendation. And I've just a question to confess that highways and environmental health can actually be done on scientific grounds you know you can actually actually get evidence but historical significance in many ways is very difficult because what i might describe as historically significant is something which somebody else might think is of no significance at all it is more subjective it's a lot more subjective rather than being objective in the sense of you know you've got highways or environmental health can actually give you readings and you know displays etc okay not sure about that but i think i think you're asking the uh, historic buildings officer to come outside for a fight by the sound of that <laughs> right any further questions from members no nope. okay so with regards to this item at uh, bannum 3pl 2021-0153 full implication your officer's recommendation is one of refusal. Can show of hands, please? One, two, three, four, five, six. And those against? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, thank you. This item's refused. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have um, our next application at Boardswell. Um, it's two applications within 3PL 2022 uh, 1033 a full application and 3PL 2022 1034 listed building consent. And um, we've got Peter Jervis, who's the applicant. If I'd like to come sit on the right hand side, sir. Thank you. And um, this one's one of Gemma's. Okay. Um, over to you then, please, Gemma. Thank you, Chairman. I'm just getting the presentation loaded now. Apologies, one sec, let that disappear. This application is actually two applications. It's a full application and a listed building application. And the way it's going to be run is a single presentation going through a single set of slides and then two votes. So one vote on the full aspect of the application and one vote on the listed buildings aspect. So the full aspect is the change of use of a public house and a flat above to ancillary accommodation to the main dwelling. 
which includes internal alterations, including the demolition of internal walls and formation of staircases. The listed building portion of the application, separate application, listed building application, internal alteration, including demolition of internal walls, formation of staircase to facilitate the change of use application. This is the site and the wider context. The application site, as in the description, is currently a public house of this authorised use. It has been shut for some time, as annotated in your report, and there is a flat above. So it does have some level of accommodation. Sorry, just one sec. Yeah, yeah, the pub's to the right hand side, really. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, thank you. Yeah, said, we're fully aware. Thank you. That's the site in context. And as you can see, the red line is the application site here. And it's further detailed. As I say, there are some photographs of the site. The elevations will show the resort door proposed for blocking up, which is on the eastern elevation, as you can see. The existing floor plan, which shows the bar and will show some of the elements to be removed, such as the bar and the internal walls, which you'll see changed later on. The alterations for the listed building aspect and to facilitate the change of use are marked in red. Existing and proposed second floor, again, the changes to the listed building marked in red. And the external views of the public house associated parking and the access. Applications for the change of use and the loss of a community asset come under policy COM04 of the local plan. This application has been supported with a, a spark, what's labelled as a viability assessment. Actually, it's a projected profit and loss account. When you're assessing COM04, it reads that it can be demonstrated that there's no local need for the facility or that it is continuing function is no longer viable following appropriate marketing or an equivalent facility in terms of quality is provided to serve the same community in an accessible location. The information submitted in support of the application points out that there is a village hall that most community groups who used to use the public house have started using for their regular meetings. It is not assessed in planning judgment that a village hall is of the same type or aspect as a public house in that you need to book it, hire it out. It's not open to the public. It's not, a, well, it's not a pub. It's not open to go in and out as one wishes. So it is put forward that there isn't actually an alternative suitable community facilities available. In addition, the viability report which has been submitted is a projected accounts and it's just given a projected year's accounts. From the information supplied by the app in support of the application, the public house has been under the same tenanted ownership or tenanted use since 2010. This is in the report. It's not understood why the applicant hasn't submitted actual accounts for this period. We're all aware that public houses and a lot of facilities such as this suffered during the COVID pandemic and had to shut, being forced to be shut, and then had to institute social distancing. The pub hasn't submitted plan any any actual accounts to support the, what's happened since the COVID pandemic has been ended and the site has been shut, nor has any marketing been produced. So the actual application site has not been marketed for sale. It is therefore assessed that the principal of the development hasn't complied with policy COM04 as the information submitted doesn't demonstrate that the policy has been complied with. With regards to amenity, the application doesn't have any adverse impacts on the amenity nor the character of the area. This is regarding the change of use. So there is no impact here. The application complies with COM03 of the local plan, and GN02 and COM01. With regards to the heritage impact, there is no objections from the historic buildings officer on the application. However, when we look at it, the listed building application is applied for to support the change of use application. And you'll see this in your recommendations in your heritage section within the report. The policies as applied have not been complied with and the application for full change of use has been recommended for refusal. 
and this is taking into account statutory consultations, there has been two letters in support, one in objection, and this is to the full application. The listed building application, there's been no public comment on. As the listed building application is submitted solely to support the change of use application, it is also recommended for refusal, and there is no overriding interest, no public interest, in the changes to the listed building to facilitate a change of use, which is recommended for refusal. I hope that that's clear with regards to the two recommendations. And I do believe the way that it's listed in the agenda will have the full application vote first, followed by the listed buildings application vote, which makes sense for the chronological order of the development and the reliance of one upon the other. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Mr. Peter Jervis, please, who's the applicant? You have three minutes, sir. You need to switch your microphone on. Thank you. You're Thank right. you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've been a resident in Boardswell for 25 years, and I bought the whole building, of which two thirds of it is actually my house. Um, it was had a ruinous building order on it, and, and therefore I've spent the time over these years to actually uh, refurbish it to a very, very high standard. I was the actual person that put the application in um, to for change of use for the business to sorry, for the one end of the property to be used as a bar. Um, so it was me who put the application in. Um, and really I did it because we 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 do appreciate and want to enhance our community. And I've also set up a charity in the business, so in the village, um, which has been running for over 20 years to support the church building and support. Um, activity of, of giving inclusivity in the community as well. Um, we also set up Project Boardswell um, and we built a new village hall and the joint applicant with me is currently the chairman of that village hall. So we, we are about community and we respect that. Um, the reason the bar closed is because last October um, the, the current um, tenant came to me and said that this bar is not viable, I cannot make enough money. The reason I haven't submitted any accounts because they're not my accounts, they're his accounts. I don't have his accounts, so I can't physically put any accounts into the bar. Um, so reluctantly, um, I accepted um, to reduce the lease, um, which had another two years to run, and the tenant um, came out of the property. And the reason I did that, legally I didn't need to, but I did it from a moral and an ethical perspective, because if we couldn't make enough money um, to make a living, um, then I needed to support him in moving on. Um, the expert report coming from Adnams was from them, wanted to see whether there's anything else we could do to make the bar work. And their um, this decision was, this bar is not um, profitable, you can't make it viable, because it's just two small rooms um, on the end of the building with no ability to increase trade um, in other areas. There is a licensed alternative in the village, which is the village hall. All of the groups that were in the bar now, now operate from the village hall. One was called Sargalites, which met on a Friday night. We used to get 10 to 15 people attending when it was in the bar. Now the club has over 35 members. So actually moving the cl clubs to the village hall has actually benefited the community within Boardswell. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Okay, it's open to questions from members. Oh, sorry, sorry, before you do. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, we have a, a, um, a letter to be read out from the ward member, Councillor Bambridge. So Councillor Bambridge states, I've considered this application carefully and have reached the conclusion that... Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, yeah, uh, I've considered the application carefully and have reached the conclusion that of the two serious options that you have, that you have, you should approve the application to close the bar. That is the position I would take if I was before you today. I have considered the proposition from camera to retain the facility within the village, but to set it against a bar which cannot provide food for customers or indeed a profit for landlords, I feel that to insist it remains open would be for perverse. The most regular groups of local customers have transferred their allegiance to the village hall a few few hundred yards away and Adenham's brewery who are well recognized in the area have been consulted and declared the site is unviable in their professional opinion. 
I believe the applicant and agent will be available to answer any questions. I believe the parish council have no objections to closing the bar. I believe that there is no swell of support within the village for it to remain open. Okay, terrific. Do we have any questions from members at all? No. Okay, thank you. We'll go, go straight to the vote first. Um, our first one, 3PL 2022-1033F, which is the change of use application for the pub at Boardswell. Your officer's recommendation is refusal. Can show of hands, please? One. Those was against the recommendation of refusal. Ten. Ten, one. Okay, can I move on to... Uh, I'm just going to take this other listed building, which I think is, is for for part of it anyway, 9F, listed building consent. Obviously, your officer's recommendation was one of refusal. Could show of hands, please? One, and those against? 10-1, we've got that just out of the way. Okay, from the floor then, could I have your um, <coughs> reasons for going against the officer's recommendation, please? Uh, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it doesn't seem like there's, a, 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 um, there's insufficient justification given, uh, I believe, um, to support um, and the officer's recommendation. Uh, it's been closed. It's not been proved as a, as a community asset. Um, so therefore, I, I believe that um, it, under, under one of the policies, 16, 16 of the MPPF, um, that reverses the decision. There's, there's no yeah. significant okay. evidence. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for that, please? A councillor? No. Do I have a seconder for that? Right. Can I just let my solicitor say a few words before I take a seconder? Yeah, I'll how about the following, that uh, despite the absence uh, of a formal viability assessment, uh, members committee is satisfied that uh, the uh, business is not uh, viable uh, and that uh, uh, accordingly uh, they are uh, satisfied with the uh, application on that basis. Okay, on that, uh, Councillor Kybert. I would say, and it's been demonstrated that the village hall provides a suitable alternative community. No, 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 not for the community. It's not for. Not for the, what is what the the, the, the issue is, is uh, the planning issue is that there hasn't been a viability assessment, uh, and it is reasonable for you to conclude that. In the very narrow circumstances of this particular uh, application, you are satisfied that one is not needed because in this particular situation, uh, you, uh, uh, having heard all of the facts, are satisfied uh, that the business is clearly not viable and you can reach that conclusion without um, any further formal assessment. Thank you. Could I have a seconder, please? Um, Councillor Kittle Morris, yes. Okay, that's fine. Oh, yes, if you wish to add, that's fine. It's not, um, it's a comment, really. Um, I mean, I've been involved in the closure of a pub in one of my villages in, in my ward, um, and the parish council fought tooth and nail for that to stay open. So did the local residents, and, and on their behalf, I did the same. Um, in this case, the, the ward rep and the parish council both say it's not a viable going concern, and therefore I back what, uh, what, the, what the solicitor has said in terms of second. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, um, so with regards to 3PL 2022-1033F, from the floor, you are recommending an approval. So could I have a show of hands for approval, please? One, two, three, four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And those against? One. Delegate conditions. Yeah, delegate conditions, can we? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, delegated. Thanks, sir. This is approved. Thank you very much. 
Um, we have, um, okay, sorry. Only to vote twice, yeah. Oh, on the, on the listed building one. Listed building vote, um, uh, approval of listed building. Sharp as attack. And those against, same, 10 1. And delegate conditions on listed building, thank you. Good. Well done. That's all. That's all done. Sorted. Okay, uh, we're moving on to um, item seven nine G, three PL twenty twenty two one zero one eight, and it's full application at Deerham, and um, that's you, please, Gemma. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Just get this. The application site you can see at Durham Rashes Green. The application is being brought to committee as part of the land required to provide the car parking area is owned by Breckland Council and is currently going through the process of being sold. But that's the reason the application is before you today. The application is for the construction and of replacement industrial unit and offices and a new car parking area, as mentioned following the demolition of existing and additional car parking area off-site adjacent to 11A Rashers Green. And here's the site within the wider context. This is Rashers Green, which is a designated employment site. So the policy for you is EC03. You can see the two sites referenced. So one is where the new industrial building is proposed and the other site is where the new car parking <coughs> is proposed. And that's where the ownership issue has arisen as with the car parking area. Now this one shows it probably more clearly. Proposed new factory and the proposed car parking. This is the layout of the site plan. Proposed factory storage and processing area, 50% of which is to be used for storage and distribution. That's shown there, ancillary offices. There is some on-site parking, as, you, as members will be able to see, including disabled parking, which puts it close to the building, reducing the walking. And there is another four spaces, four, sorry, five spaces, I can't count, for car parking on-site. And there is sufficient room for the turning and delivering of large vehicles. This is the proposed parking plan. This has been through some discussions with highways. This is all detailed within your report. You'll see there is a drainage ditch across which highways have commented on that if anything required to be changed by the drainage dish, this will have to be given authorization from the lead local flood authority. However, the following discussions, this is the plan which they have proposed for the parking. You can see the additional parking here and the access. This is the proposed building. It does have at the highest point a height of 12.15 approximately meters in height, and that is to the pitch. You can see the site, the, the building, sorry, has been separated into two sections, which also changes the width at different points. It's 35 metres wide at the widest point, which includes the small section at the front, which members, if you can see my cursor here and here, and then reduces to 25 metres for the majority of the building, which you can see across here. The current site, this is the forward elevation, principal elevation, as I said, it's the former deer and coach base site. The proposed building members will be able to see is significantly bigger than that that's currently on site. However, Rashes Green is typified by a variety of industrial buildings. Some have been recently regenerated and rebuilt, or there is planning permission for some to be regenerated, rebuilt, and that's going through there. Sorry, could I, yeah. just, could I just stop you? Do we know the height of the existing building or not at its highest point? Uh, no, nope, I'm just sorry. I'm just sorry off the that. top of my head. No, Chairman. No, okay. No, I'm just thinking in judgment of the fact that the new building is 25 meters tall. No, fit 12. 12 tall, 25 wide. Oh, 25 wide. So it's saying 25 meters Tw is massive. 12, 12. 12 meters tall. That's about that, so, that again. So stick one on top of the other. Okay. 12. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, this one, this one is a relatively 
the typical industrial building, as you can see, and said so there is an increase of height with the new development to approximately 12.15 metres. Okay, taking you around the site is the Brownfield site. There's very little ecological value that can be seen through the fact it's on an industrial site and it's mainly concreted and houses a building. And the adjacent units there to show some context. And the applicants are the unit to the southeast, which you can see the um, glazing to the front, the principal elevation, which gives it a bit of interest to the site, to the development in design. And this is the existing parking area as previously approved. And this is the area for parking. And you can see there's, yes, it's already used for some informal parking, as you can see, there is cars there. If I take you back to the site plan, just to put it a bit more in. There we go, we'll keep the context. Yeah. In terms of statutory consultations, no objections have been received. Environmental health have raised no objections subject to some further information and conditions regarding acoustic fencing, the car park being restricted and secured out of hours, and lighting conditions. These are all listed in your draft conditions. With regards to the use of the industrial building, condition four will need to be amended if members resolve to grant permission for this development just to change it from the B use to the E use. This is part of the use classes order, which has been changed. There's a slight tweak to the condition that you have in front of you that delegated authority will be sought for. Anglian Water has provided some, provided some advice as an informative. The site is also within an area of nutrient neutrality. It has been screened using screened correctly. The full screening is within your report. This does not result in any increased overnight accommodation and therefore it is deemed safe to recommend approval of the application within an area of nutrient neutrality. I said that full paragraph or two paragraphs is within your report. Norfolk Public Works Way have advised that footpath number 11 is adjacent the site, but it will not, the development will not, this is the parking site, sorry, will not encroach upon the footpath. And as such, they have not objected. County highways have not objected to the application subject to conditions. The tree officer did request additional survey, which has been submitted and that is deemed acceptable. That has been assessed by officers. And there is a supplementary report detailing the environmental health officers consultation with regards to the acoustic fencing. So that came in a bit late, but members have had that as a supplementary report. Overall, the application for the parking and the building has been assessed and is in compliance with policy ECA3 and other relevant policies and is recommended for approval subject to conditions that are before you and delegated authority to tweak condition four if members can't approval today. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, it's open to questions from members and I will take the local member, Councillor Dargan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> More of a comment, just as supporting the application, I think it is um, benefit to Dereham. It's, um, I believe that they've already got an associated company already on the site. The only warning I will give is Dereham's running out of sites like this rapidly. So when it comes to the local plan, remember Dereham needs more sites like this, but it just proves Dereham's open for business. Okay, thanks for that advertisement. Um, <laughs> Councillor Kittle Morris, please. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chairman. I, I, I'm curious about the off site parking. I just wondered how that could be um, reserved and not, not used by other users of Russia's Green, whether there's a fence around it, which hasn't been mentioned. Well, I, I, I actually, within my briefing, asked a very, very similar question, and the existing one is used solely for the employees of that, um, I don't know what it's called, Travox, Altex, whatever it's called, solely by them, and it works very, very well. My question was, this one is literally 50 yards up the road, and I've been assured that they will be policing it through their staff, their staff park there or they go home. And that, and that's the thing, I, I wouldn't, if I worked there, I'd sneak my car up the side of the curb somewhere. But no, they've been told they're going to park there, so it's going to stop all that ad hoc parking okay i hope that's an answer for you my very my very is identical. that condition chairman addition to conditioned yes i think we've conditioned that haven't we or or the applicant has um 
I think it's covered by the applicant who who um who literally is not offering anywhere else for his staff members to park and once once them parked there in an in, it's an enclosed as the other one is enclosed and behind mesh fencing so it's safer for them to park their cars there than than leave them ad hoc on the because I think there's a, a, a burger bar there or something which gets vehicles stopping and turning so okay any other further questions uh councillor atwell please can I just clarify on the site layout plan? What is to the rear of the site? Because uh, I'm talking about to the west as you looked at the layout. I think there's connect buses along there as well. So there's no residential dwellings back onto that. Yeah, there's a smaller existing unit and then there's housing. So that's probably a bit better. I could make oh. the bigger. Here we are. The house is just the rear. Yeah. And um, lastly, when there's, there's going to be lorries going in out of this site, I know there was buses there previously, coaches, but there'll be lorries in and out of the site. John Goshawk Road, I don't believe that that is an adopted highway. I believe that that's in private ownership. I don't know whose ownership. I know there was a lot of consternation out there a few years ago with some of the industrial units because they couldn't get the thing repaired, et cetera, et cetera. I just want to know, are they going to, the vehicles are, are still going to go out onto John Goshawk Road or are they going to come out the front onto the main road of Rashes Green? Um, and if they are going out on John Goshawk Road, has the owner been consulted? Okay, yeah. well, the plan, the plan shows the entrance at the top of that plan, and it says um, onto John Gotthold Group. Yeah. So, yes, it does go right onto there, but... Um, but that's um, not, a, 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 that's not, not adopted. adopted highway. It's a civil matter. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things, just a civil matter, I've been kicked in the shins for. Okay, anyone else wishing to ask a question on this item? No? Good, okay, thank you. So with regards to uh, application 9G, 3PL 2022-1018, full application at Deer and Rashes Green, your officer's recommendation is one of approval. Can I have a show of hands, please? That's unanimous. Thank you, members. Okay, our final one. You'll love this one. Um, item 9H and 9I. Uh, 3PL 2022-0717A and 0718F at Watton. Um, over to you, please, Rebecca. Uh, thank you, Chairman. So um, we are in Watton on the footpath outside Chaston Place. You may remember it from the last committee, a little bit of deja vu for you. Um, so I'm treating you again to a BT Hub um, application. Um, I know you're getting well um, versed in these. So we're in Watton. <coughs> um, so previously at the last committee, I showed you this location plan with this green dot in this location right next to the bus stop outside Chaston Place uh, in Watton High Street. And I showed you this plan to show the relationship with that green square um, with the um, existing street furniture, um, with the existing planters, bins, um, et cetera, in that location. And you can also see the proximity um, to the bus stop. Um, in between last committee and this committee, the applicants have actually submitted an amended siting plan. I think they were listening to Councillor Gilbert on the recording. 
um, only kidding, and um, they provided an amended plan, just a reciting within that red line, within the red location plan, but a reciting, and you can play a game of spot the difference. Um, so instead of just being to the south of the bus stop there, sort of equidistance between the existing planter and litter bin, you can see it's just been moved to the right hand side of the screen where it says existing manhole. Um, hopefully you can see that green square that is in the previous um, location plan um, red line is what I'm getting at. Um, so they would like your members to reconsider this application on the basis of this slightly revised location, but still within that red location plan. So um, this is just an image for those of you who don't remember of the BT hubs themselves, and they are uh, approximately nearly three metres in height, just as a reminder. And then um, here you can see the existing view. So instead of being in between those planters <coughs> and, and the bin right behind the bus stop there, it'll actually be set back on the back of the highway's edge behind the bin for you. So ignore that one. And then we've just got some images. So just to um, quickly remind you members um, about the matters that we discussed at the last committee. So Watton Town Council have no objections to this reciting um, of the um, location. Um, the Highways Authority have no objections to this reciting and actually consider this to be improvement on the previous siting. Members will note that the Historic Buildings Officer previously raised concerns about the impact um, this development could have on the conservation area, particularly on the setting of the conservation area in this location, um, and um, thought that this would um, result in harm to the setting of the conservation area. Members, um, you may recall, and I explained section 17 earlier, but um, we agree with the historic buildings officer that these do have the potential to cause harm to the character and appearance of the conservation area um, through their presence and being additional street furniture in this location. Um, but members will recall you have to then define whether that harm is substantial or less than substantial harm. And given that there's no demolition, uh, um, officers conclude that this is less than substantial harm. And members will recall from just the, the last item that um, if there is substantial harm, officers then and yourselves would have to weigh that against any public benefits um, that may be created with the harm um, of the character appearance of the conservation area. And members, that is set out in paragraph 2.5 of your report. Um, so as officers, we suggest in the report that there are public benefits generated um, by these hubs, um, by ultra fast broadband, um, accessibility options, opportunity to power your phone, 100% carbon free energy, um, that they provide advertising space for local um, town and parish councils, as well as the, the um, district council itself, you can make free phone calls to 999 so you wouldn't need a phone at all to use those units and they can be used as wayfinding with mapping as well as having systems within them to monitor air quality traffic flows etc so those are your public benefits at paragraph 2.5 of your report um, so as officers we've weighed those public benefits against the harm that the historic buildings officer has identified um, to the character and appearance of the conservation area and it is your officer's opinion that those public benefits outweigh the harm generated even with the reciting of the box in the new location and therefore on that basis um, <coughs> we have recommended this one for approval along with you have no objections from your statutory consultees and that is both the full application and the advertisement consent thank you chairman Thank you. Um, anyone wishing to? Oh, Councillor Gilbert. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. I just. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy where it is now. I was very surprised and pleased to see this come through. It's nice to know that these big companies do listen to us sometimes. <laughs> Good. Anyone else wishing to comment? No. Okay. Thank you. So. Um, your officer's recommendation, we need two votes on 3PL 2022-0717A. Your officer's recommendation is uh, one of approval. Can I have a show of hands, please? That's unanimous, thank you. And uh, 3PL 2022-0718, and that's full application. Can I have a show of hands, please, for, for approval? Diagon, thank you. Thank you, and that's approved. Thank you very much. Okay, um, item 10 on your agenda is applications determined by the Deputy Chief Executive uh, for your information and item 11 is appeal summary also for your information. Um, with that, um, I close this meeting for today. <laughs> <laughs>